Dear trainees, welcome to the e-learning unit on mechanical biological waste treatment. Organic waste is known for causing a high amount of emissions on landfills. The separate handling of organic waste makes it possible to reduce emissions and, on top of that, make profits from compost or energy. In addition to the separate collection and composting of organic waste, there is another option for minimizing and stabilizing landfill input. I am talking about Mechanical Biological Waste Treatment, or MBTs. As suggested by the letters M and B, this is a combination of mechanical treatment, like in a sorting plant, and biological treatment, like in biogas or composting plants. Such waste treatment plants are typically designed for household waste and similar commercial waste. They separate the waste mixture into fractions based on material and then biologically treat the organic fraction. This procedure has multiple goals. The waste volume and weight going to landfill is reduced. Also, biological activity is significantly reduced. In consequence, humidity, biomass and the potential landfill gas and leachate production are decreased. Treatment in an MBT furthermore reduces landfill setting. Why? Because it ensures that the mass loss via biodegradation takes place before landfilling. This prevents loss of stability at the landfill. The MBT reduces particle size and allows a higher emplacement density of the waste in the landfill. This means that you can store more waste on the same surface area. In summary, the processes in the MBT improve the stability of the landfill body as well as storage conditions. Mechanical treatment can involve sieving, sorting, separating, cutting and mixing of the waste. It allows extracting recyclables like metal from the waste. Another potential benefit is the production of refuse-derived fuel, called RDF. The treatment reduces the costs and effort required for the construction, operation and aftercare of the landfill. Since there are less emissions like leachate and gas, there is less need for capturing and treating them. In consequence, the design of the landfill is simplified and its size and aftercare reduced. Sounds great, but how exactly do MBTs work? The initial idea is very simple, to separate waste that can be used as a valuable from waste that can't. The simplest MBT procedure is to separate waste into a fine and a coarse fraction. These two fractions differ in particle size, in composition and other properties. Waste in the fine fraction is very humid, mostly biodegradable and often has a significant content of minerals like sand, gravel and stones. Their calorific value is low. Therefore, it is not appropriate for incineration, but for biological treatment. The coarse fraction contains plastics, wood, paper and textiles. It is less humid and has a higher calorific value. It will burn better, so it is used to produce secondary fuel, for example, the RDF. Mechanical treatment can also be used to separate recyclable and non-recyclable materials biodegradables like kitchen waste and non-biodegradables, as well as light and heavy wastes, like plastic and glass or metal. Another key element of MBT, as the name suggests, is biological treatment. We are all familiar with biological treatment. This includes processes like composting or biogas production. In general, one aim is to stabilize the organic components of the waste in order to obtain a material which can be disposed at landfills with low emission potential. The second option, besides stabilization, is drying the organic components for RDF production. We will look at the different options later. But first, we will take a look at the process and necessary components of an MBT plant. The process starts with waste delivery, 
registration and reception. After the way bridge, the waste is discharged to a deep or flat bunker that are usually placed in a reception hall to protect the waste from rain, sunshine and to catch emissions, especially odor. Contraries like big metal components, mattresses, carpets, car batteries or obviously hazardous waste materials are removed here. A wheel loader or crane carries the waste to the first mechanical treatment step. As mentioned before, the options for mechanical treatment are crushing, sieving, sorting, separating, as well as mixing and homogenizing. Here we have, for example, a bag opener or shredder, which reduces particle size, homogenizes and opens waste bags in one step. Afterwards, the waste is separated by a sieve into a fine and a coarse fraction. From both streams, selected components such as recyclables like plastic, glass or paper can be picked out. At this stage, mostly manually. Ferrous metals, on the other hand, can be picked out automatically by magnetic separators. This has two benefits. Metal is a precious recyclable and removing it prevents damage to the machinery. Now the fine fraction and sometimes the coarse fraction remaining after sorting are taken to biological treatment. Before entering biological treatment the coarse fraction might be shredded. In biological treatment organic materials will be stabilized or dried. Additional mechanical treatment steps like a second sorting run, sieving, other refinement or size reduction may follow. Finally, the output fractions need to be put into intermediate storage and often compressed or baled. There are many different biological treatment methods. The main distinction is between aerobic and anaerobic processes. That is biological treatment in the presence and absence of oxygen. Aerobic processes are used either to stabilize and compost the degradable organic matter or to dry the waste by the heat that is produced by the aerobic microorganisms. Composting is probably the best known aerobic process. But high quality compost can only be produced from separately collected clean organic waste. Mixed waste goes through a procedure similar to compost. Stabilization takes about 8 to 12 weeks. The first step is reception and removal of contraries. Afterwards, the material is mechanically treated to remove metal and the coarse fraction, which is typically large sized materials like plastic, bags, newspaper, packaging, wood and so on. The fine fraction undergoes intensive aerobic treatment and a maturation phase. The remaining material is stabilized and safe for landfilling. Only very low gas and leachate emissions remain. The second option besides stabilization is a drying process to produce material which is energetically usable as secondary fuel. The procedure starts as always with reception and the removal of contraries. Afterwards, the material is typically shredded to homogenize it and water is removed from the waste via brief aerobic biological drying using the same mechanism as for stabilization. This takes roughly one to four weeks. The heat produced by aerobic biological degradation in combination with active aeration evaporates and discharges the humidity. Afterwards, the material is mechanically treated to remove metals and the heavy fraction like stones or glass. Optionally, recyclables can be removed via sensor sorting. The fraction remaining after such treatment has a high calorific value and can be used as secondary fuel. These two types, aerobic MBTs and aerobic drying plants, are the most widespread technologies. Why? 
They have low construction costs and are based on simple and reliable processes. But they can still reduce the material put on a landfill by more than 50%. One disadvantage compared to more complex anaerobic MBTs is the absence of biogas production. Aerobic MBTs only consume energy, while anaerobic MBTs include the aerobic processes and additionally produce energy in form of biogas. The advantage of aerobic MBTs is that they produce a lot of solid refuse derived fuel for off-site energy production. Do you want more? More costs, more risks, but also more process results? Do you have skilled and well-educated engineers, biologists and chemists available? Do you have highly motivated and skilled staff? Well, let's make biogas using anaerobic processes. These plants have the advantage of producing biogas from the organic fraction that usually exceeds the energy demands of the MBT by far but they come with higher costs and greater complexity. There are many different anaerobic MBT processes. They differ in water content, temperature, duration, number of steps and the transporting and mixing of liquids and solids. In general, we differentiate between wet and dry fermentation. Wet fermentation means that there is a solids content of only 5 to 15 percent and a water content of 85 to 95 percent. Dry fermentation is by no means dry. In this case, the solids content is 30 to 40 percent and the water content still is 60 to 70 percent. An example of an anaerobic MBT process is partial flow dry digestion, which minimizes the quantity of wastewater. The process starts again with reception and removal of contraries. Dry mechanical treatment extracts a coarse high calorific fraction, metals and this time two fine fractions for biological treatment. The bigger fraction, in this case 40 to 100 mm, goes to an aerobic treatment. The smaller fraction is divided into two streams. One is added to the aerobic treatment, the other one is mixed with warm water and pumped in the anaerobic dry digestion vessel. There, biogas and wastewater are produced. The water can be added to the aerobic treatment steps too. This way it can be mostly reused. The biogas can be used to produce process heat and electricity in abundance or be upgraded and fed into a natural gas grid. All these processes still produce a large amount of output which ends up on a landfill. And the incineration of the RDF only recovers the energy represented by the calorific value. But the energy that was consumed for the production of these materials, including mining, transport and fabrication, is lost. Like most of the recyclables get lost. Is there an even better option? Yes. After a long period of thorough development, testing and the first full-scale application, a better option is now available. In summary, this technology produces raw material for production instead of fractions for disposal. It closes the loop of a circular economy. Reception and shredding of the input are followed by the application of a patented, sophisticated technology which uses three-step wet sink float separation and cell lysis. Dry sorting of the clean output further refines the wet separated materials. For example, sand, stones, gravel are sorted out. Further dry sorting separates metals, glass and construction material. A second wet separation step divides the fine fraction into silt and heavy metal content. After cell lysis, mixed fibers, aluminium, leather, wood and plastics can be extracted. 
and only the remaining part undergoes anaerobic treatment to obtain biogas, ammonium, sulfate, liquid with potassium and organic fertilizer. The output can look like this. Now you have heard about the variety of available MBT processes. As we have seen, they range from simple technology versions to high-tech solutions. MBT is a proven technology. It is highly flexible with regard to waste quantities and the composition of the technical design. In developing and emerging countries, MBTs can be used to significantly improve landfill conditions while also being cost efficient. A concept with an MBT and a single landfill is only slightly more expensive than a standard landfill. And don't forget, such a combination has far less environmental impact than taking untreated waste to a landfill. Does it mean you can pick the plant you like and order and buy like a car? No. First, you have to clearly define your targets, explore the market and destinations for the plant output, and also the quantity and composition of the waste input taking into account seasonal variations. Before deciding on any waste treatment technology, find a competent, experienced consultant who can lead you through the jungle of technologies, prepare a qualified feasibility study and business plan, and support you on your further way. Thank you very much for your attention.